Kanye Dama of Union Soviet First time out, Soviet Union. Volleyball is an exciting and challenging game. Since its introduction to the Olympics in 1964, the sport has experienced a fantastic growth in popularity. Today, volleyball is enjoyed by more than 70 million participants around the world at levels ranging from the recreational game to international competition. In this film, we will look at various elements of the game, both the basic individual skills and some offensive and defensive team tactics. In its simplest form, the game involves the exchange of a ball between two teams separated by a net. In an attempt to score a point or win a side out, each team collaborates to deliver the ball into the other's court in such a manner that the opponent is unable to return the ball. The challenge of the game becomes greater as players perfect their individual skills and teams develop complex strategies with which to make their attacks more difficult for their opponents to receive and return. Many of the individual skills which are necessary in order to master the game require motor skills and actions used in combinations, which are unique to the sport. The performance of these skills is further complicated by the fact that the player must first anticipate where the optimum point to contact the ball will be before moving into position to perform the skill. 
Volleyball is a game of transition. A team must be able to make the change from offense to defense and back again rapidly during the course of the game. Play usually occurs in a logical sequence or a series of phases. The play begins when the server sends the ball into the opponent's court. The serve is immediately followed by the opponent's service reception. This passing phase leads to the setting and attack phases. The action of one team attacking puts their opponents into a blocking and attack reception phase. Only when a team has the serve are they in a position to score points. For this reason, teams attempt to minimize the number of times that their opponent has the serve. In order to obtain the serve, and therefore the potential of scoring points, a team must break the opponent's service and win a side out. This is accomplished by formulating a successful attack of their own after receiving their opponent's service or attack. On each side of the net, the court is divided into six areas. They are numbered in a counterclockwise direction, one through six, beginning with the position of right back. This numbering system is used to describe the positions of the players when they line up in service reception formation. The most common type of service reception formation is the W formation. This diagram shows the pure W alignment. The player who we see wearing number two in the front court nearest the net could be an attacker, but would more likely be a setter. If a team uses attack systems which require a front row setter, they are left with only two eligible attackers. In modern volleyball, in order to utilize the attack potential of all three front court players, many teams use multiple attack offenses, which use a setter who comes up from the back court after the play has begun. Application of this tactic results in a service reception formation in the W, which looks more like this. Here, the setter is designated by the X. Notice in these examples the variety of attack options which are available to a team using multiple attack tactics, with the setter penetrating from the back row to the front court to set the ball. This penetration is relatively simple during the service reception, but becomes more difficult as play continues. After setting the ball and covering for the attack, number two, the setter, retreats to her back court position to play defense. If the opponent successfully returns the ball, the setter again penetrates to the front court, ready to receive the pass from the back row. When the play is whistled dead, the setter must assume his correct rotational position before play resumes. On sequential rotations, the setter must penetrate from each of the backcourt positions. When in position one, the setter lines up behind the player in position two. As the ball is served, the setter moves to the net. The reception with penetration from position six begins with the setter lining up behind the player in position three. Reception with penetration from position five is achieved by having the setter line up behind the player in position four. Here we see service reception with number nine of Czechoslovakia penetrating from position one to set the ball. Let's look at right side penetration once more. Now we look at a reception with the other Czechoslovakian setter number six coming in from the center back position. We see this alignment demonstrated once more this time with Poland's number six setting. The third position for penetration from service reception is left back. Notice that Poland's number six again is the setter. He moves to the front court by going between the center and left front players. Another service reception alignment for penetration from position five stacks the left side by moving the player in position three over to the left behind the setter. The advantage of this alignment is the opportunity of placing this center front row player in an outside position in preparation for a corner attack. 
Here we see the Soviets using the left side stack with number nine penetrating from the left back position. In service reception, the player receiving the serve ball initiates the receiving team's transition from defense to offense as he passes the ball to the setter. The back row players preparing to receive the serve move into position with their arms held together, extended in front of the body, and the feet comfortably apart. The ball should be contacted with the lower forearms in front of the body. The arms are angled towards the setter or target area. The position of setter is both a physically and mentally demanding one. It is the setter who usually organizes the attack, selects the plays, and runs a team's offense. It is very important for a team to have competent setting. Setters must be fast, agile, intelligent, and among the best athletes on the team. If setters are quick and agile, they can often chase down errant passes and convert emergency situations into successful counterattack action. The setter must move into position quickly and be on balance before setting the ball. The setter should be in an upright stance facing the oncoming pass. The feet are placed comfortably apart with the foot nearest the net forward and the weight slightly back. Before contacting the ball, the setter should see where his attackers are. Contact with the ball is made above the head with the hands opened wide in the shape of the ball. As the set is being made, the setter squares his shoulders to the attacker being set. The attacker approaches the set at the angle which is most conducive to the proposed attack. On the last step of his approach, the attacker brings his arms back. Simultaneously, as he contacts the floor with his feet, the arms are swung forcefully upwards and the legs are extended in the jump. On his ascent, the attacker draws his hitting arm back with the elbow held high and the shoulder rotated in the direction of the back court. As the ball arrives at the area of contact, the attacker continues his arm action, swinging his arm forward towards the ball and simultaneously rotating his upper body forward. As this forward action is taking place, the non-hitting arm is drawn down close to the body and forcefully pulled back in an opposite direction. During the attack, there is an interesting collaboration between the passer, the setter, and the attackers. This interrelationship is necessary because the outcome of the actions of the set and attack are dependent on the preceding action. In other words, if the pass is accurate, the set is more likely to be accurate and consequently the chances of a successful attack are improved. The execution of combination plays requires consistently accurate passing to the setter as well as practiced coordination between the setter and attackers. Efficient collaboration between these players can only be accomplished as a result of many hours of practicing and playing together. Setters and attackers communicate frequently with each other during the course of the game in order to capitalize on opportunities which may arise. For example, a team may want to exploit a difference in height between one of their attackers and one of the opponent's blockers. Notice how the Polish setter isolates a short Korean blocker to increase the advantage of his tall corner attacker. This is a good tactical maneuver. The setter should try to develop various techniques of setting and play selection so that the opponents find difficulty in predicting where the ball will be set and therefore where to set their block. 
In the following sequences, observe the variety of attack options used by Japan's veteran setter, Nakoda. Remember that the key to attack execution is coordination and timing between the setters and attackers. In order for the setters to develop their techniques to proficiency, they must practice with the attackers in simulated game situations. Modern volleyball can be very creative. For example, teams can develop the attack combinations which best suit their needs. Teams attempt to improve the effectiveness of their attacks by using deceptive offensive tactics. These tactics are designed to reduce the opponent's ability to predict where the attack is coming from, where it is going, and how fast the play is developing. Teams execute attacks from different areas along the net in an attempt to isolate one blocker against one attacker and to direct their attack to an area which is weakly defended. If we divide the net into seven attack areas, the setter would occupy the area shown as number five. Open sets are relatively high sets made to areas 1 and 7. Quick sets are made to areas 5 and 6, while shoot sets are made to areas 3 and 4. Some plays are designed to conceal the area of attack. In the flare, the attacker calls for either a back set or a front set, depending on the position of the blockers. In this case, we see Canada on the far side of the net using the front set option of the flare and then Poland using the back set option. Another dimension of attack strategy involves the element of execution time, a team which can effectively manipulate the rhythm and tempo of the game to suit their purpose controls the game. Execution time is manipulated by using combinations of the slower open attacks with the faster middle attacks as shown in these sequences. The tandem is an example of a time differential offense. Two players approach the net simultaneously. The setter has the option of setting either attacker. The timing for the play is set by the middle attacker who approaches for a quick set. In this case, the setter sets the second attacker who uses an off-speed attack to score. Another look at this shows the timing difficulty experienced by the blockers in trying to predict to which one of the potential attackers the ball will be set. More complex tactics, such as the X, use a combination of these variables of attack area and timing to confuse the blockers. The middle attacker initiates the play, and the right side attacker X's around behind him, contacting the ball outside of his left shoulder. The approach of the middle attacker is crucial because he sets the timing for the play. He must be in the air as the set is being made. If his timing is off, the play is revealed and can be more easily defended against. Another factor adding to the difficulty of defending against teams using multiple attack offenses is the scoring potential of the setter. When the setter is in the front row, he can either set or attack. Clever use of this option by the setter further complicates matters for the opponent. Unfortunately, not every play is successful. When plays are unsuccessful, a team must immediately move to make the transition from offense to defense. We find then, associated with the attack phase, a simultaneous flow of the offensive team members to the attacked area to cover the spiker. In the event that the primary attack is blocked and the ball returned to the attacker's court, the offensive team may be able to recover the ball and collaborate for a secondary attack. This ability of a team to recover their own attack and convert those situations into side outs or points is a very important team skill. In the play sequence shown here, notice the active involvement and position of team members during the attack phase. After recovering the attack, the setter retreats to her defensive position and prepares for the next play. Depending on the situation, she may be able to penetrate to the front row to set the attack, 
or she may have to make a defensive play and pass the ball to a teammate who must now set the ball. The power and the speed of an aggressive attack can be very exciting for both players and observers, but often of equal excitement is the action involved in a well-executed block. <laughs> Blocking is a very important team and individual skill. It's the first line of defense employed by a team to protect their court from their opponent's attack. The players try to deflect the speeding ball back into the attacker's court. The basics of good blocking are anticipation of the set and area of the attack, jumping ability, body position, and arm and hand position. The blockers should attempt to predict where the setter is about to set the ball and line up opposite the hitter's arm. Notice that the blocker's arms are swung up along the sides of the body and not out in front of the body as in the spike jump. This technique is important for avoiding net faults. He should time his takeoff with that of the spiker. As he nears the top of his jump, the blocker's hands extend over the top of the net with the hands open and the fingers spread apart. The blocker presses the hands and arms over the top of the net in an effort to contact the ball and deflect it back into the attacker's court. The middle blocker should concentrate on the development of the opponent's offense. The blocker must see the ball enter the setter's hands and watch closely as the ball is being released. As soon as the direction of the set can be determined, he must act accordingly. In the case of an outside attack, when the middle blocker is required to move to the outside, he times his movement with the height and speed of the set. As he moves outside to form a two-man block, he should watch the approaching attacker. A two-man block presents an attacker with an increased obstacle because of the increased surface area. For this reason, teams attempt to make use of this advantage whenever possible. The outside player in a two-man block usually sets the position and timing of the block while the middle blocker moves over to complete the block and the other front row player, the offside blocker, assumes a defensive position for block coverage. The court behind the blockers is defended by the back court players. The defensive strategy and alignment selected by a team should suit their opponent's attack patterns and take into consideration the defending team's particular capabilities and strengths. Two of the most common defensive alignments are the six-up and six-back defenses. The name of the alignment indicates the position or area covered by the players in the center back or number six position. The advantage of the six-up defense is that it places the backcourt player in a good position to initiate a counterattack, particularly if that player is a setter. If the block is a solid two-man block, she moves up behind them. However, if there is a space between the blockers, she must prepare to receive the attack. If only a one-man block is established, the center back should swing into a cross-court position to receive the spike. The advantage of the six-back defense is in the protection provided for deep back court. The center back player attempts to predict where the attacker will spike the ball and then swing into a position where the spike can be received and the ball passed up to the front court where the transition can be made for the counterattack. When only a one-man block is formed, the center back plays a deep center position, as in the case of a two-man block, and must be prepared to swing into a cross-court defensive position. In a situation where there is no block, the backcourt players move up to the midcourt position and prepare to receive the ball.
In the previous sections of the film, we have introduced you to the basic elements which make up the game of volleyball. Concentrate on the play sequences which we will now show you and try to review the information which we have presented to you as it relates to the flow of continuous play. This series of rallies shows examples of the two classic defensive alignments. East Germany in the blue is using the six up and Korea in the white is using the six back defense. Notice the positioning and movement of the center back player on each team during the course of play. They do not remain stationary in the number six position, but are constantly in motion, reacting to each anticipated attack as play develops. Notice the players switching positions and their corresponding movements as they make the transition from defensive to offensive situations. In this sequence, the passing by both teams to their respective setters is inaccurate. This restricts the number of set options that the setter has available to her and makes the attack more predictable, and therefore much easier for the opponent to defend against. In this sequence, we will focus on the ability of a team to react to the ball in an emergency situation. Here the Koreans quickly regain an organized pattern of play. This illustrates the importance of quickly reacting to deflected and blocked balls and demonstrates their ability to convert a precarious situation into one of advantage. Because of the nature of the game, many of the technical and tactical elements are repeated either intermittently or in a continuous cycle. In view of this fact, it is important that teams are able to make the often rapid transition from an offensive state to a defensive state and back again efficiently during the course of play. It's essential that players collectively combine their skills in a coordinated manner. It is also important to understand that every action, pass, set, spike, or block, has a purpose. The more control that a team has over their collective actions, the higher will be their probability of success. In the reality of the game, it becomes apparent that no matter how well calculated and coordinated that a team's offense and defense are, the play is still susceptible to individual player error. In this play, the Soviet blockers near the top of the screen are reading and reacting well to the Japanese attack. Notice that they are playing a six-back defense, but draw their cross-court player unusually far to the front of the court to cover against the Japanese spiker. The Japanese attackers react to this weakness and put the attack into the undefended area. Here, notice the concentration of the Soviet attack from the left side of the court. This is a good example of a team varying the speed and area of their attack from a specific area of the net. Notice the accuracy with which the Japanese men pass the ball to their setter as they make the transition to offense. Observe also the concentration of the attack in the center court and the variety of their middle attacks. Determination and persistence are essential elements in a team's transition from defense in their preparation for the attack. Here, the Soviets are rewarded for their persistence. There is 
no one system of play in the contemporary game that can be absolutely termed superior. Each system of play and every tactic employed is founded on the fundamental basics of the game. In order to perform the individual skills of the game efficiently, players are required to react spontaneously to the various conditions which arise during the course of play. These conditions are a product of the dynamic environment which characterizes the game that is volleyball. Thank you.